Good morning. Good morning and welcome to the Episcopal Church of the Holy Comforter. We are so glad you all found us inside. I think your shoes and pant legs will thank us later. Our service today follows the bulletin. I invite you to turn to the first page. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may, be, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Please be seated for the lessons. The first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 29, verses 1 and 4 through 7. These are the words of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the remaining elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I have sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives and have sons and daughters, Take wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile and pray to the Lord in its behalf. And for in its welfare, you will find your welfare. The word of the Lord. Please join me in speaking the Psalm 66, responding verse by verse. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. All the earth bows down before you sings to you, sings out your name. He turned the sea into dry land so that they went through the water on foot. And there we rejoiced in him. Bless our God, you peoples, Make the voice of his praise to be heard. For you, O God, have proved you proved us. You have tried us just as silver is tried. You let enemies ride over our heads. We went through fire and water but you brought us out into a place of refreshment. A reading from the second letter of Timothy. Remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. This is my gospel for which I suffer hardship, even to the point of being chained like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I endure everything for the sake of the elect, so that they may also obtain salvation that is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, we will also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Remind them of this and warn them before God that they are to avoid wrangling over words, which does no good, but only ruins those who are listening. 
do your best to present yourself to God as one approved by him, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly explaining the word of truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him. Keeping their distance, they called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not 10 made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies, Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the wonder of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light, for the joy of ear and eye, for the heart and mind's delight, for the mystic harmony linking sense to sound and sight, for the joy of human love, brother, sister, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein said that there are really only two ways in which we could go about living our lives. One is as though nothing is a miracle, as though miracles 
don't exist. And the other is as though everything is a miracle. Everything in life is a miracle. In our gospel reading today, we hear of Jesus miraculously healing ten lepers of their leprosy. But only one, the least likely among those ten in the eyes of Israel, a foreigner, only one turns back to give thanks and praise to God. Only one of them does that. I think miracles happen each and every day. I think miracles happen each and every day in our own lives, in the lives of those we love, and in the world around us. But all too often, we fail to recognize those miracles. Luke tells us in the Gospel today, I think it's noteworthy that Luke tells us that the tenth leper turns back when he sees that he is healed, when he notices God's activity in our lives. And all too often, God's activity in the world goes unnoticed. Why? Because we're usually either too busy or too wrapped up in our own anxieties or fears or regrets that we fail to remain mindful of the presence of God in our midst. And this is a tragedy. Remaining mindful of God's presence in our midst is the foundation of the spiritual life. On this point, I believe all the great religious traditions agree. And really, this is what prayer is all about. The monastics teach us this. It's not just about intercession. It's about cultivating within ourselves the capacity to remain truly present to God's activity in the world, whether that be through the love of those around us or through the beauty of the earth or through a feeling that we might feel welling up inside of us. Just prior to the birth of my son, I was speaking to someone about my prayer life, a spiritual director, and I was anxious that after my son was born, I was not going to have time anymore to pray. So I was talking to him about that anxiety. And he paused and smiled and looked at me and he said, Adam, after your son is born, every moment that you are present to him, every moment that you play with him, every moment that you care for him, Adam, I believe that that is prayer. That that is prayer. A great mentor of mine once said, it can take a lifetime to know that what is standing in front of you is God. It can take a lifetime to come to know that what is standing before you is God. Which reminds me of a memorable saying of the Protestant reformer Martin Luther, who was once asked what true worship really looks like. And Luther answered that question by pointing to our gospel reading today. Luther said that true worship is embodied by the tenth leper turning back. The tenth leper turning back. So may we, this day and always, be people of prayer. People who are cognizant of God's activity in the world. And therefore, people who live gratefully and passionately and lovingly, just like that tenth leper, who was so caught up in God's activity in his life that he didn't just turn back, but he threw himself down at Jesus' feet to give thanks and praise to God. When we do this, we help God continue to work miracles in the world because God is then able to work through us to continue to bless other people. We have so much to be grateful for. We have so much, no matter what is going on in our lives, to be grateful for. God is with us. God is here. 
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Please stand as you are able and join me in proclaiming our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Prayers of the people. Gracious and loving God, you did not create us to live alone, and you have not made us all alike. We thank you for the varied ways by which we have been brought up and through which we discover your purpose for our lives. In gratitude, we pray for our sisters and brothers. This is my commandment. Love, love one another as I have loved, loved you. you. We pray for our families with whom we live day by day. By all that we do and say, help us to build up the faith and confidence of those we love. And, th and when we quarrel, help us to forgive quickly. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. you. We pray for the places where we work that we may be reliable rather than successful, worthy of trust rather than popular. Whether those, those we work with be many or few, may we help to give them the sense that they are personally wanted and cared for. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. We pray for the communities to which we belong and especially for this county in which we live that we may be good and faithful citizens. We pray for our county commissioners and all those who hold public office. Make us willing to accept responsibility when we are called to it. Make us willing also to give place to others that they too may have their opportunity. Grant that our influence may contribute to the common good. This is my commandment. Love, love one, one another, another as I have, I have loved, loved you. you. We pray for the generation to which we belong, those with whom we share common memory, common standards of behavior, and a common attitude towards the world. Grant the presence of Christ may be so real to us that we may be able to help our generation to see him also as our contemporary. This is my commandment. Love, love one another as I have, have loved, loved you. you. O oh God, into whose world we come and from whose world finally we must go, we thank you for all those people, great and humble, who have maintained the fabric of the world's life in the past and left us a great inheritance. May we take up and encourage what is good and hand it on to those who come after 
believing that our work in your name will not be in vain. This is my commandment. Love, love one another, another as I have loved you. And now, either silently or aloud, we pray to you for the intentions of our hearts. Almighty God, to whom our needs are known before we ask, help us to ask only what accords with your will, and those good things which we dare not or in our blindness cannot ask, grant us for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought and in deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbor and our friend. We are truly sorry and in humble contempt for the sake of your son Jesus. Have mercy on us that we may delight our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also unto you. Peace, peace. Peace, peace, peace. Peace, 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 peace. Are you excellent for God? Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, I thought you were fantastic. I can tell you have the Holy Spirit. Thank you, thank yeah, you. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. Peace, peace, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Hey, I'm Robbie. Thomas, my name is Thomas. Nice to meet you. Peace, 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 peace. Well, good morning uh, to one and all. Uh, it is a joy to have uh, members of three different congregations uh, worshiping uh, in one place. Uh, we're pleased to have with us today uh, Pastor Johnson and members of the Sons of God congregation that worships uh, each Sunday uh, out at St. Athanasius Chapel, as well as members uh, of our sister congregation, St. Andrews and Hall River. The weather uh, did not cooperate uh, with us today, uh, but we uh, invite all of you to a meal following the service down in the Great Hall. Uh, and the, the best way uh, to get there is going to be to go back uh, out these bell tower doors and follow our ushers' instructions down Davis Street uh, and in through the double doors uh, facing Davis. Uh, and we will say a, a brief blessing just prior to the dismissal, so you don't have to wait for that. You can get down to the Great Hall and just dig in. And I would like to thank uh, Sue Schilke and her team of volunteers for organizing the feast. And I'd also like to thank uh, all those who um, contributed food uh, for us to enjoy uh, today. This morning we continue to receive nominations from our congregation uh, to serve as a three-year term uh, as a member of our vestry. And you can place uh, nominations in the back of the box uh, on your way out of church today. I also want to invite all those tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, to hear from our new suffragan bishop, Ann Hodges Koppel. The ECW, the Episcopal Church Women, uh, are sponsoring that event, but they are opening that event to all women and men who would like to come and hear from our bishop, hear uh, from her uh, about our Galilean uh, vision uh, that the diocese has put forth and that Holy Comforter has taken its inspiration from 
for its long-term Galilean goals. And that event will start in the parlor at 10, and then the bishop will be in here at 10.30 uh, to speak on that subject. And now Marissa has an announcement to make. So as um, we've talked about a little bit, we are in the county in the process of creating a response to how we feed um, everybody who needs to be fed, especially with the closing of loaves and fishes. There is some progress being made and some movement. We are opening a distribution site that will be available for um, Allied Churches, Salvation Army, and potentially some of the other um, church-based and community-based, such as what we have from, um, totally blanking, but um, from back behind us, uh, to come and get food. But that place needs to be stocked. So there's a challenge that is out right now, um, and all the churches in town are here in the same speech today. There is a challenge to all congregants to bring one item of food each month at least and to bring it in here and then we will get it to this distribution site that is there. Um, we encourage you to start doing that tomorrow if you want. We'll have something back in the rogation table in uh, each Sunday. And I know we already do that on the first Sunday, but because we're trying to get things stocked and ready to go right now, food is disappearing off the shelves as fast as we can bring it in. So I do encourage you to think about that next Sunday when you're on your way. Thanks. Thank you, Marissa. Now Jesse has an announcement to make. Good morning. Good morning. Okay. Some of you already know about the golf tournament, but for those of you visiting with us today that don't, you know, we have a partnership with Newland Elementary School here in Burlington. Uh, we train the tutors to go in and help the kids. We also do a backpack ministry, and we're having a golf tournament next Saturday at Quarry Hills to benefit that. And for those of you who would like to play that haven't signed up, you still have some time. I still have some registration forms, or if you would like to... If you can't play and you want to donate to sponsor, you know, we're still taking donations as well. But what we're also going to need next Saturday morning is some people, just a few, not too many, to volunteer to help us come out and get set up and serve food and help get the golfers registered. And we need a few people to maybe make a dessert, like a, some brownies or cookies or maybe some baked beans or potato salad, some sides just to bring out. But I'm going to put up an event on Facebook if you could just sign or email, just sign up and let me know what you want to bring or how you can help. We don't want to end up with so much food that we won't be able to eat it all. We don't need a big surplus. We just need a few things and a few people to help. But I'll be downstairs after church. If you'd like to help, just let me know. Thank you. Thank you. And finally, uh, I'll just note that we'll be distributing communion this morning from two stations on the floor. Uh, and you're invited to remain seated during uh, the singing uh, of the offertory hymn, but then please stand on the last verse as the gifts are brought up for the altar. With that, we continue our worship with the offering of our gifts. Let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Okay. Right, okay. up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who have forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which was given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God. Christ is God. Christ is God. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the These are the gifts of God for the people of God. This is God's table, and all are welcome here. Now let us pray.
Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now to the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God, we thank you for all the many abundant blessings you shower upon us. We thank you for the gift of this day, for the gift of one another, and for the food we're about to eat and the hands that prepared it. May it nourish our bodies so that we can be the people you call us to be in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.